have two topics. One we'll do second is a specifically Long Island topic about the plume, um, but the first is about COVID and PPE. So keep can hold this actually. So we're going to keep things short as usual. Well, we all know that the second wave of COVID is coming. It's there in lots of parts of the country, and it is unfortunately coming to New York as well. We have a death toll of 250,000 people in New York. Uh, some of those deaths were in New York where the number is increasing. Every part of the country has felt the impact of COVID. We have now in New York a seven-month high uh, for COVID cases. Many of many New Yorkers are doing what they're supposed to do, wearing masks, socially distancing, taking steps to support local health care and community. But for sure, one thing we have to do is protect our health care workers, our frontline health care workers. And the bottom line is during the last crisis, there was a desperate shortage of PPE for health care workers. We do not want that to happen again. Our health care workers desperately need... This is going to blow away. Here, hold on. Our, our health care workers desperately need PPE. They're our frontline workers. They expose themselves to COVID on a daily basis. We do not want to repeat what happened in the first crisis where there was a desperate shortage of masks, of gowns, of gear. We remember when people made masks out of scarves and out of, you know, makeshift things. We do not want that to happen again. And that's why we're here today, to avoid that type of crisis. Now, the bottom line is the second wave to New York is coming, and there's a looming shortage of PPE, of masks and gowns and all the gear. So we need an expansive plan that helps docs, nurses, hospital workers, providers get the gear they need before, before the second wave hits us. Enough is enough. When we remember those early days of the crisis, PPE workers were forced to jury rig masks and gloves out of spare pieces of clothing, out of string. That can't happen again. So today we are pushing a plan that we have just introduced in the Senate called the Protect Our Heroes Act to ensure that those working on the health care front lines have the PPE they need. Right now they do, but as things get worse, they won't unless we do more. Okay, our bill authorizes $10 billion for the strategic national stockpile to purchase large, large amounts of N95 masks, of gloves, of gowns, of face shields, so that the stockpile has it in advance and it can be distributed immediately. You don't wait for the crisis to hit and then tell them to start making the stuff because it often takes a while to make the stuff, especially because of supply line chains. If you're making a mask and a certain kind of bolt is not available, you're stuck. So that's why if we can, if we can have the strategic stockpile have all of the stuff it needs now, we can avoid what happened before. Secondly, very important as well, we, it, we invoke the Defense Production Act, which would allow the federal government to commandeer factories and others to make these things. It was passed during Truman, during the Korean War. The President Trump has not wanted to use it. Let him use it now. That's very, very important. And we, the Biden administration is already committed to using it. The Biden commit, uh, uh, administration is already committed to using it, but given the, the poor transition, they're not going to be there for two months, two months from yesterday till, till January 20th. So we're urging, pleading with the Trump administration, invoke the Defense Production Act, and we're going to try to pass our legislation in the lame duck so that it's not up to the Trump administration, so that the stockpile gets filled, and so that the DPA is required to be used. Okay, our, we have many supporters, including the unions who represent the frontline workers, public health officials, governors, and others. 
So we must do this and do this now. Um, nationally, according to CNN, the number of coronavirus cases surpassed 12 million on Saturday. There are shortages of PPP in the rest of the country that has COVID that's gone through the second wave already. So they need this immediately. We don't need it today in New York, but we could need it in two, three weeks or a month. And we cannot wait. We do not want to repeat that. Um, the Wall Street Journal reported that demand for N95 masks is way ahead of production. And the N95 mask is the safest mask you're going to have, and especially for our frontline workers. So that's why we need things so desperately. So again, this is the kind of thing... Sorry. These are the kind... This, this is the kind of thing... These are the kinds of protective equipment that our workers need. They're risking their lives for us. We should make them as safe as possible. And I'm going to make one other comment about um, the transition. Unfortunately, the Trump administration is not transitioning well. This is creating a lot of problems. The distribution of the vaccine. We don't know what the Trump administration is doing, and they're not coordinating with the incoming Biden administration. On national security issues, they're not coordinating. And one other that may, people may not realize that's just coming up. Now that President Biden elect, President elect Biden has announced he's putting nominees forward, he said today that they'll have their first nominee Tuesday. There are no FBI background checks that can be done until the GSA transmission officially transitions with the new Biden administration. That is going to delay the fight on COVID. If the appointees of the Biden administration, especially those involved in fighting COVID, can't get their FBI background checks, which are lengthy and take a great deal of time, the FBI interviews all kinds of people, it's going to hurt the health of the American people. So we're renewing our plea to the Trump administration. Transition. Now, even Republicans who won't admit that President Trump has lost the election, which we know he has, are still urging him to trans do the transmission, the trans, um, the transfer of power. Now, We're, they're still urging him to do that transfer. Now, that's what we need. Okay. Question Questions on this, and then I'll go to the Long Island situation. Senator, did you speak to the president-elect about the scope of the bill, and what was his reaction? Yes, I met with the president, as you know, in fr Friday in Wilmington, Delaware. The president believes, as Speaker Pelosi and I believe, we need a strong bill that includes things like aid to state and local governments, that includes things like money for increased testing and money to distribute the vaccine. I'll say it again. Okay. President-elect Biden... In our, in, our, in our conversations on Friday, made it clear that he believes this Congress, the lame duck Congress, should pass a strong comprehensive bill that meets the needs of the American people, including, including state money for state and local governments, and money for mass transit, and money for health care, new testing, money to help distribute the vaccines once they are produced, money for um, uh, schools so they can help open. So there are many things we need in a comprehensive bill, and we hope the Republican Senate will go along and, and do the things that are needed. And in your view, but he's next. She's next. Yes, sir. You can't uh, get six before she gets one. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, speaking of uh, cabinet nominees from the president-elect, are you concerned at all about senators being nominated and then having to Look, I'm going to leave the choices up to the president and leave my conversations with him private. You know, if there's qualified senators, that's great. Other questions from anyone other on PPE and on transition? Again, they've got to have a good transition or it's going to hurt the health, slow down the distribution of vaccines, slow down the fight against COVID because the FBI checks take a while and they cannot commence until the transition is officially begun. Okay, let me do Newsday. Yeah. Okay. Now, as 
everyone knows, there has been, sorry. Okay. Okay, as everyone knows, there has been a plume of toxic materials that has hurt over 300,000 Long Island residents and could hurt the water supply of many others. And we must do something about that plume. And for a decade, I've been pushing the Navy, which is responsible for this at the old Grumman plant in Bethpage for putting these poisons in the, in the water, and now they are spreading. So I just announced um, a game-changing course correction by the Navy as it relates to our work. The Navy has decided that they have a great degree of responsibility and will help pay for the cleanup. This says it all. Whoops, I'm going to take off the sticker. I don't want to rip the paper. Yes, I do. There we go. This says it all. This says it all. Navy to take action on plume. That is a great thing that the Navy is finally stepping up to the plate. But today I have a new update on this news. And it involves the transition and President-elect Biden. This game-changing course of course correction by the Navy to contain the Grumman, Grumman plume represents years, years of personal advocacy and collaboration with our water districts in Massapequa, in South Farmingdale, in Bethpage, and undeniable science. Finally, finally, the Navy admits it has major responsibility for cleaning up the plume, as was shown here. They admit their responsibility, as you can see. Okay. Furthermore, the Navy's course correction comes admit as, as we're transitioning from one administration to the other. Therefore, today I'm first urging the Biden transition team and his new administration to put an immediate focus on the Grumman plume and work with the Navy to chart a path forward. And as the Navy shifts gears and prepares to come about, the incoming Biden team must study this new stance and speak to the Long Island stakeholders for their input. Some of the water boards think there ought to be certain changes in the plan. I've talked to them. I agree, and I am urging the new incoming Biden administration to take into account the concerns of some of the water boards. While the Navy rightfully ended decades of resistance to bearing responsibility for the plume they and Grumman created, Finalizing key details will, will be up to the President's new Department of Defense and require input, input from all stakeholders, listening to their concerns regarding the new plan, regarding long-delayed reimbursement and red tape and more. I have full confidence the Biden administration's ability um, to meet the mark here will occur and that we can make all of the water boards happy with the plan. Okay, questions on that subject. Have a nice day, everybody.